Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Torpedo Dice. The game plays one to four players, ages eight and up, and takes approximately about 15 minutes or more to play. And in the game Torpedo Dice, you're going to be manning a, sub a submarine, one of these guys here. You can play the basic version of the game, or if you want to get a little more advanced, <laughs> the advanced version of the game, your objective is to defeat or sink your opponent's submarines. During every round, you'll be rolling die based on the number of players plus one, selecting die in turn order, and then utilizing those die to form a basic row or a column in order to destroy your opponent's submarine. You'll be marking off certain spaces on your opponent's, or on your board to signify your opponent's submarine. You're basically looking through your little manhole here to see your opponent's submarine, and you're attempting to destroy each and every single one of their different types of machinery. For each one that you destroy, it'll stop them from doing a unique ability that can help them throughout the game defeat your or somebody else's submarine and your objective is to defeat your opponent's submarine before anybody else does so when you're playing with multiple players you're going to go around the table attacking left and of course the rules will still apply in the same way the unique advanced variance is going to allow you to activate certain systems as opposed to them just already being online and after you've activated them then you can utilize them to sink your opponent's submarine in the game torpedo dice let's take a Look down below and I'll show you how it's played. Welcome to Torpedo Dice in all its glory. And here's what you're going to get in the game. First of all, the rule book and of course the box. You're also going to be getting four player boards that have an advanced variant and the normal variant on each side. And you're going to get five dice. Last thing you'll get, some dry erase markers that include this little uh, erasable tip here for whenever you're finished with the game. To begin the game, all you'll need to do is select the number of players and the mode you're playing. Is it going to be the solo mode, the normal normal mode or the advanced mode. And if you select the uh, normal mode, you'll choose the number of players. Let's say I'm choosing two players. I'll set these guys aside and then each player is going to get one of these submarines. After you get your submarine, get a dry erase marker and place it next to your board and set aside the rest of the markers. You will not be using them. Then after that, go ahead and choose the number of die, which is number of players plus one. And so we have two players, so plus one is three. Set these die next to the boards and remove the rest of the die. And this is all you need in order to play the game. Pretty simple, right? Go ahead and choose a first starting player. Maybe the last player who's been in a submarine. And let's go ahead and say it's this player here. That player will roll the die and then select one of the three die that he or she has rolled. In this case, this player will select this one here. The next player will then select a die as well. The remaining die will be set aside for the next round. From there, each player can choose to utilize any of their abilities, and there's multiple abilities to choose from on both sides. This one here will let you flip your die, so I can go from a 5 to a 2. This one here will let me give myself one extra pip in any area that I so choose. So instead of a 2 here, I can do a 1, 2, and then I can do a 3 over here in the corner or in the middle. It's up to you to decide. This one here gives you a plus or a minus, so from a 2 to a 3, or from a 2 to a 1. And then this one over here is a duplicator. If my opponent has a four and I choose, I can flip that to a four. This one here is minus a pip. So if I don't want this four, maybe I want a three, I can go ahead and remove one of these. And then this is going to be my new set of pips, excluding this one here. This one over here will allow me to shoot in a straight line. So instead of four in the exact uh, grid that you see here, it'll actually be four in a straight line, which could be something like this, one, two, three and four. Really nice, right? After you've selected one of your abilities, then you're going to go ahead and mark on your board here uh, to defeat your opponent. Now, this board specifically here with this player, this player, let's say they want to use the uh, m go ahead and go ahead and in a straight line. In this case here, I would have to use one of my max three on this ability because you can only have three of this one and this one in the entire game. And I'm going to mark in a straight line five pips anywhere in my choosing. If I mark any of these areas here that doesn't have a little target symbol, I will take a damage. If I don't, I am going to be damaging my opponent's submarine. And in this case here, I would go one, two, three, four, and five. And then this, over, oh, this player over here, let's say that they wanted to do a four symbol, then of course they could choose to look at a three by three grid on the board somewhere and then they could go ahead and do that damage. So let's go ahead and say that I wanna do this four by four. There's one over here. This is, my, this is my three by three grid right here. I'll mark it off just so you can see it. And this four here represents each of the corners. One, two, three, and four. 
Thusly, this one here would make me take one damage because it doesn't have a target symbol on it. And I'll go ahead and show you really close up so you can see exactly what I mean. So target, 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 this one doesn't, so I wanna take a damage. Now, however, if I didn't use my ability, which I didn't, I can actually give myself a minus pip. So instead of including this pip, I can remove it, thusly marking these three spaces. And that is going to be my turn for both players. As you can see, I've marked off these three spaces. Now, the reason you want to do that is because, and I'll zoom in here really quick so you can see a, a little better here, is because you're trying to mark off the grid uh, for each of the different uh, spaces or areas indicated by the special abilities. For, for instance, here, this these spaces right here is for this specific ability. These, these four spaces here is for this ability. When you mark off totally every single space of a specific location, you can actually X off your opponent's uh, specific ability. So if I have this player here, mark off all five of those, this player is going to lose this ability. So that's why you're gonna to wanna to do that. And of course, when you mark off all of the areas, basically fill in all of these target areas, that is going to have you win the game. Pretty useful, right? So each player has chosen their die, they chose an ability, and they've marked off spaces. Then the next player is gonna to get to go. In clockwise order, they'll take all the die, they'll then roll, they will select a die, the other player will select a die, they'll both then use an ability if they would like, and then they're going to mark them off. In this case, we have a three and three, so I could do something like this. One, two, three, four, five. This one here would be marked, but I'm gonna minus one. And this player over here has a two, so in this case, I can mark off this one and this one. And that's basically how the game works. You keep going around, rolling die, selecting one, removing the last one not chosen, use an ability, mark off on the board. Then check to see if you've filled in any specific areas on the board that fully complete a location. And if you have, you'll mark off that on your opposing player's board so they can't use that ability anymore. Once you've filled in every single dot on your player board, that means your enemy has been defeated and you win the game. And in the case of a multiplayer game, it works the same way. You will win the game if you defeat your opposing player's uh, board. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. That's Torpedo Dice. Rather simple, right? And really quick, let's go ahead and talk about the advanced mode. The advanced mode works in the exact same way as the basic mode, but the unique thing is now, when you roll the dice as a player and select one, and the opposing player selects another, and you remove the last one, if you don't want to use your die ability, you can instead mark off one of these spaces, which will let you use that ability until it is removed by your opposing player. So now from now on, because I didn't use this five, I can go ahead and flip my die. And maybe this player doesn't want to actually take and uh, activate an ability, they could just go ahead and mark these spaces off on their board. But because they cannot remove a pip like they normally would be able to from this area here because it's not activated, they would have to take a singular damage from their ship. Another way you can lose too is if all the damage markers here go to the little skull. If you ever reach this area here, you will lose the game. And um, the last thing is when you activate two spaces on your board in this specific area here and this specific area here, it will then allow you to use your special ability here on the far uh, right hand side of each area. If this area were to be destroyed and this one too and neither were activated, you would still trigger this to be activated. So either you need to activate them or they need to be destroyed in order to use this ability. But still, rules apply if you are able to, uh, if, you, if you basically lose that specific area because your opponent had filled in all those bubbles, then that is going to go just like any other. And finally, this one over here on the side, it must be activated. And otherwise, that's basically how you play the game Torpedo Dice with the advanced mode. There's a solo mode as well, but you can go ahead and look at that rules yourself. Torpedo Dice is a competitive game that is also a roll and write. You will be basically rolling the die and utilizing them on as, as though they were a three by three grid and you'll be marking off certain spaces of submarines. Now, of course, because the die are situated in a certain way, it's going to be difficult to actually get the exact spaces that you want. And there's limited number of spaces that are actually going to contribute to exactly the pips that you're going to need to sink a submarine. And because of that, you're likely going to take damage. You want to make sure that you take less damage uh, while you go throughout the game, especially at the beginning, because as it gets more challenging with less available options, you'll start taking higher amounts of damage. Additionally, when your specific types of machinery get removed from the game because your opponent is basically rolling and attempting to destroy them themselves, you're going to need to use your wits uh, about you to determine which of your abilities that you still have remaining are the best choices. The fact that it has an advanced variant, which allows you to activate the specific machinery 
scenery is very nice and provides a little bit of a unique twist to the basic version of the game in which you're rolling a die, changing the die based on an ability that you have, and then using that die to defeat your opponent's submarines. Uh, a small few caveats that were like, eh, not, not my favorite parts. A, the, the fact that the die are limiting you on uh, where you can place is not a bad thing, but the fact that there's so few variants uh, or variations to where you can actually place your threes and fours and sixes without taking damage was something that was kind of, I don't know, irksome to me for some reason, even though technically it, it makes sense and I know why they're doing it. Um, you're always going to be rolling, selecting, changing, and doing the damage. It's a very straightforward style roll and write. It's something that I've, I've seen before in a number of ways, but the unique twist onto this one here is, of course, that you're focusing on one of your opponents on the left-hand side, and this game can be played pretty much anywhere. That's like my favorite thing about the game and Callie's favorite thing about the game as well. We were sitting there playing in the pool. <laughs> Actually, we had a little thing out with a tray. We rolled the dice and we're sitting there just mucking it off on our boards, telling our, uh, <laughs> telling each other which one of our machinery had been destroyed. Uh, it's very, very versatile and very easy to use. There's not a huge amount of components, so you don't need a whole lot of table space in order to play the game. The component quality is nice. The basic style of dice, a basic, uh, these little dry erase markers here. And then of course the boards that you can easily erase on as well. My favorite version of the game is definitely going to be the advanced variant because it makes you start to decide whether you want to activate your systems or just simply use your dice to do damage. I would always suggest to at least pick a certain number of them before simply losing all of your abilities and your opponents having those abilities to use because some of them are very powerful. Like for instance, doing damage in a straight line, the ability to flip your die or give your die a plus or a minus one. They're all the unique little twists that you can kind of select and uh, allow yourself a little more more options. The amount of uh chance that you can remove is going to be based on what you choose to allow yourself by removing turns or essentially removing the damage that you could be doing to your opponent. And because of that, I enjoy this game. Uh, this game is something that's going to be definitely played again. I'm going to be playing this game with um, my younger cousins. Uh, my grandma and grandpa can easily play this game. It's something that you simply need to understand how the die work. And if you can understand that, you'll basically get the game. All of the symbolization on the specific player boards is really easy to understand once you read it one time. I can just take these and say, okay, this one lets me flip. This one lets me be equal to the die across from me. This one here lets me do it in a straight line. Over here is gonna give me a plus or a minus one. Here, this will let me rotate the die. And then this one gives me an extra pip on the die anywhere of my choosing. It's really, really nice as far as that works. Now, because of that, the game's replayability is limited. What I would actually like to see is additional boards that allow me multiple different chips to choose from. That would be nice. Uh, maybe different additional variants on the advanced mode and, of course, the basic mode. Uh, what's here is, is, you know, there's two sides that you can play on, basically, and it plays up to four players. And, of course, if you don't mind the, the lack of the different types of ships, then this is something I would strongly suggest you take a look at, especially if you like Roland Whites. This one is really easy to understand. This is kind of like a gateway roll and write with a bit of a competitive edge that provides some unique twists and turns based on the fact that you can defeat your opponent's submarine the way you choose, limiting their abilities based on what you think that they personally will enjoy the best. Like for instance, I personally like to flip my die where Kelly likes to do damage in a straight line. And so because I know that, I'm gonna specifically remove her straight line capabilities. Artwork is solid, it's cute, it's family friendly, and it's fun. I enjoy the specific uh, different types of submarines that they have here and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing more of them. I don't know how much more of an expansion the game would get, but maybe like a small expansion little pack of these guys here that allow me different submarines would be cool. But if you enjoy, like I said, a roll and write and a competitive game, something that's really easy to learn, uh, easy to understand, and something that you can play over and over again pretty much anywhere you want, then Torpedo Dice is something I would definitely suggest taking a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Torpedo Dice. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification button to see more of our videos here on YouTube. You can also go ahead and head over to unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. A bunch of new reviews that even I don't have on my channel here, so it's some unique written reviews. Maybe you're at work and you can't watch a video, you want to read something during your spare time, there you go. The website is available to you. Our live streams are every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one every week with Josh and uh, a, a whole, basically the whole crew. Uh, moon shells coming along. We're finishing up uh, the last few things in manufacturing before we start shipping the games out. Patreon members, thank you so much for supporting us. We greatly appreciate it. And as always, I look forward to defeating your submarine ah, next time. Get him, puppy, get him. Oh.
You're such a good reviewer, puppy. 